Karen, Karen's 14 years old. And uh, I think everybody here knows that Lori Morgan is the daughter of George Morgan. And uh, when George passed away July the 7th, 1975, Lori was only 15 years old. And George wanted Lori to be where she is today, sit right flat on top of the world. She makes about $150,000 a day, friends. And we got busy. When, when George passed away, I got a job at the Roadway Inn Lounge across the street from Opperland Hotel so that Lori would have a woodshed, so she'd have a place to perform. We worked there at 9 o'clock Sunday night to 1 o'clock in the morning. And uh, we did that for three years. And I guess she learned, like I said, she's up to $150,000 a day. And we've had the same dreams and hopes for and prayers uh, for Karen. She's eat up with show business. That's all she does. She just like I, when I was a kid, all she does is practice. That's it. There's no plan. There's no horsing around about anything. It's just going to be her life. We already know it. And if the good Lord is willing, that's what will take place. And another thing, friends, if she gets up to $150,000 a day, I'm going to be her manager. <laughs> I'm also going to be our bus driver <laughs> and our hairdresser. Be she like, might. Be like Tom Parker, take it all. Yeah, yeah, I'll take it all. You're right. <laughs> I want to talk about another great band. I, I don't know about you folks. I, I, I know I'm weird. But I sit around and I think about songs that we're missing because Hank Williams is not here to write them. I think about Patsy Cline's not here to sing. And I'd love to hear a brand new CD of Red Foley or Jim Reeves or George Morgan. You know, there's so much we're missing because these folks are gone. And they are not being replaced. Far from it. Believe me, far from it. But let's just take Hank Williams. He died the New Year's Day, 1953. To this day, he still makes a million dollars a year from all those songs that he wrote. He was a great songwriter. And he had, well, you all heard the hymn, I Saw the Light. He wrote that, of course. You know where the idea came from? They were riding along in the morning, in the morning about 3.30 one morning. Their car was just about out of gas. It's fixed to stop any minute. They was all scared to death. And one of the boys said, I saw the light. And he's talking about the light to a filling station. And that's where we get our hymn. I saw the light. It started from seeing the light to a filling station. And he would take these wonderful ideas back to uh, Nashville, and Fred Rose would finish them up to the product that you hear. It was Fred Rose that did that. But that's not to discredit Hank at all, because the idea for the song is the most important thing. George Morgan and I were riding along one night. I said, George, you got to write a song. We're going to record in a couple of weeks. He said, write about what? I said, I don't know. If I knew that, I'd write it myself. That's true. So therefore, the idea for, this, the, idea for the song is, is the most important part. And you too, friends, would be making a million dollars a year, and I would too, if I wrote songs like this.
us and what it say. And it says, uh, at the time, he's looking for musician Huber with Eddie Arnold. And I take it, I haven't read the book, I gotta go get it. I take it that maybe he might have wanted me to play for him. He could have done that by asking and saying money. Money will do it. I would have gladly played for him. But he had a fine steel guitar player, his name's Don Helms. And I called him Durl Durl because he went like this. Durl Durl. He called me Tingling because I went like this. That's our nicknames for each other. Anyway, I think, uh, where are we? Food Hill Grange? Okay, I want to do a little salute to the boys out west, little Bob Wilson. Uh -huh. 